Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. It's been a long time since Eva and I have had a little cook-off, a cooking competition. Uh, that's mostly because I've come to realize that she's a really good cook, I can hardly boil an egg, I don't have much chance of winning. Today might be different though, because we're talking about a category of food that, I'm sorry, Americans are king at. Sandwiches. <laughs> We know our sandwiches here. Now, I've had a few good panini in my day, but come on, Italy's not known for its sandwiches. Italy has amazing sandwiches. It's not just American sandwiches that are well known in the world. Also Italian sandwiches are very, very famous and very, very good. <laughs> we think she doth protest too much. To make things a little more interesting, I have some flashcards here. Now on each of these flashcards is written some sort of a prompt. It's either an ingredient, or a quality, or a theme. For instance, uh, we might get the sweet card, in which case we have to make a sweet sandwich. Or we might get this card, which means we have to use a wrap, tortilla, or pita. Or perhaps we'll just get an ingredient, like tomato. You get the idea? Yes, Arthur, and I'm ready for this three flash card. I know that I can win because uh, we have amazing. <laughs> Give these a quick shuffle here, and I will graciously allow you to pick the first card. So our first challenge will be with a panino. Sandwich. Panino. Based on... Cheese. cheese! I'm so gonna win this one. What do Italians know about cheese? We have the king of cheese in the world, so we know something, some word or two words about cheese. But do you know how to put them on a sandwich? That is the question we're going to answer today. So my first sandwich could easily be elevated. I could make a gourmet version, because I'm totally capable of that. However, nothing tastes quite as good as nostalgia, so I'm going to be making the sandwich exactly the way I remember it from my childhood, which means I'm going to need some of the staples of my childhood diet, which would be Wonder Bread and the real king of cheese. <laughs> This is a grilled cheese sandwich with a can of Campbell's tomato soup. One of my favorite dishes as a kid, uh, and you dip the sandwich in the tomato soup. Now, it's 100 degrees today here in Arizona, um, so I need you to use your imagination to get into the right mood for this dish, because you need the right setting, okay? So imagine, You've been outside with your friends all day, sledding, skiing, building snowmen. Your toes are frozen, your fingers are frozen, and you come inside and your mom has waiting there for you a grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup. I didn't really see my mother waiting for me with this. <laughs> but it's okay, maybe Mama Rosa, if that was the situation, she was uh, there offering me, I don't know, like pasta e fagioli. You don't even have snow in Calabria, what would you no. know? <laughs> Here. No, we have snow. Not where I live, but we have snow. You need to dip it in the soup. I think, but how can Dip I... it in the, it's part of it, it's part of it. <laughs> Ew, eh, eh. Buon appetito. Mm, buon appetito. That is my childhood right there in a single bite. 
Now I know I understand a lot of things. Do you seriously not like it? It's not that it's bad, Arbor, but it's two slices of a very bad pan brioche. I'm sorry. With an orange sotiletta. I'm sorry. Who has said over and over and over again that the simplest food is usually the best? I don't know who said that, but someone I feel like has said that. Yes, but you know how many ingredients you have in these two simple things. <laughs> That's fair. Do you want also mine? Yeah. But remember, I gave you a piece of your cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Which means that you need to give me a piece of my cheese sandwich. That's no problem because I'm sure it'll be disgusting. So what I'm going to do is one of the most iconic southern Italian uh, panini. For my panino, I need one of the most classical Italian bread. This is a homemade bread that I made, Harper. Then I need uh, one of the most iconic Italian cheese, that is mozzarella. And because, guys, we are talking about a cheese sandwich, uh, I need uh, the king of the Italian cheese, that is Parmigiano Reggiano. So I have a question. Mm. Is your entire strategy today just gonna be copying me but then frying your sandwich? <laughs> it's a fried grilled cheese. Although I must admit that that does sound like a pretty awesome idea. This is not a fried grilled, uh, grilled cheese, uh, grilled panino, grilled uh, what? No, this is what in Italy we call mozzarella in carrozza. Is the first time that you have a mozzarella in carrozza? It is indeed. <gasps> This smells way too much like real bread and real ingredients for my taste, personally. It smells a little too sort of like homemade and natural and delicious. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. It's like a Pizza Hut commercial. It's not bad. It could use some tomato sauce or tomato soup. I start to think that he doesn't deserve all this, so don't worry, I can eat all no, yours. No, no, that's okay. In this case, I'll. You I'll will skip. It. Yeah. It's very good. It's missing the flavor of my personal childhood. I wish you would have added a sprinkle of that. Essence of Harper's childhood, that would have been a nice gesture. It doesn't miss uh, my childhood because do you know how many mozzarella and carrozza my mother and my dad made for me and my sister? Mm. I think this is a solid tie. Are you joking? He came here with a toast. This is just a fried toast. I made the, I made the bread. It's delicious. I worked on this. It is you delicious. You came with a toast and you want to tie with a toast? It is delicious. Okay, I'll give you this one. It's time to see what type of sandwich we're going to make next. Yes, I'm ready. Pick a card, any card. Lay it on me. What do we got? Ha-ha! <laughs> Seafood. Mmm. And I'm excited though, because I have the right one here. Hmm. I may be in trouble. Oh, no, wait, no. Nope, I'm good. I'm good. Let's do this. Let's do this. You go first this time though. 
So you can copy me. I'll just make your sandwich, but I'll fry it. <laughs> I feel very, very confident because uh, we have in Calabria one of the best panino of the world, which is panino with pesce spada, swordfish. And as my, as a bread, I made my own ciabatta. starting to get a little worried for the sandwich I have planned because this does look pretty awesome. This is Harper Panino con il pesce spada, swordfish, panino with swordfish. It's a traditional panino from Calabria, sometimes also from the north of Sicily because with them we share the fishing of swordfish. Mm -hmm. And thanks to this panino, one small village that is amazing in Calabria, the name is Scilla, became a European place where all people go and eat panino col pesce spada. I can't say I've ever had swordfish on a sandwich before, so this is a first. You, you don't know what you missed until now. Now, in Scilla you find the panino with swordfish in several ways. There is just with uh, some tomatoes or lettuce, olives. I made mine a little bit of a style with a sort of pesto, sun dried tomatoes pesto with some almonds, so eggplants because I can put eggplants everywhere, and the swordfish. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it does. It, it does. Smells it smells really good. I know. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Oh boy. I'm in trouble. Honestly, the best part, in my opinion, are the condiments you made. The eggplant, it's almost like a relish because it's sort of sweet and vinegary at the same time. You are just covered in flour. And the uh, sun-dried tomato pesto is absolutely amazing, both of which are actually condiments that you could easily put on a lot of different sandwiches. Okay, so yeah, that's some pretty, pretty stiff competition. See, but I have an ingredient in my sandwich that's very special and it could save me or it could ruin me. My special ingredient is lobster. Now back in Maine, you just go down to the docks, you get lobster fresh off the boat. Not so here in Arizona. And therein lies my problem today because fresh whole lobster, it's hard to beat that. But frozen lobster tails, uh, we'll see.
actually a little bit weird that after all the time we lived in Maine, this is your first lobster roll. We ate a lot of lobster, but not a lobster roll. I hope it's okay. It looks very, very good. It doesn't so, look bad. To tell you a funny story, actually. See? So um, I used to work as a sailor, mm -hmm. and the uh, cook on the boat I worked on uh, was a really amazing chef. She was a judge on, do you know who Bobby Flay is? No. He's a celebrity chef, and he does a show where he goes around the country, and does like cook-offs with people. Mm -hmm. So he came to my hometown of Maine and he did a lobster roll cook-off with a local restaurant owner. And so the cook from my boat was actually one of the judges. Wow. And I got to go to the show and they made lobster rolls and Bobby Flay did like all this really chefy stuff. He put tons of seasoning and stuff and all this stuff and he lost because the judges said that he did so much, it was delicious, but they couldn't taste the lobster at all. And that moment really, really stuck with me. It was like the first time that I thought, I was just like a teenager, but I was like, oh, sometimes simpler is better. The lobster roll sandwich that I make is a classic plus a little extra. And the little extra is my curry mayonnaise. I hope that this is simple enough to be good. Buon appetito. Buon appetito, Harper. I don't know about you, I'm definitely missing the fresh lobster. I'm definitely missing the lobster claws. I was lucky to taste the fresh lobster in Maine. So yes, we missed, the, you missed the, the fresh lobster because the lobster by itself is amazing. Then, being this my first lobster roll because I'm uh, I really think that less is better. Come on guys, you can just open two slices of bread, put a lobster without mayo, without all the rest. You know what's funny actually? Actually a lot of people do do that. A lot of people skip the mayo. I almost did because I actually agree with you. I think it covers up the taste of the lobster too much. But I went with the mayo just because it is the most like classic preparation. I figured for your first lobster roll, you should have the lobster roll. It could be, in my opinion, uh, much better, but uh, like you tried. I think it's really hard to make a good sandwich. I will have to revisit this though, because if I can get my hands on some good lobster and prepare this without mayo, which I, I, I know you would like a lot better, I'm pretty sure I could pull one out of this. Okay, it's time for one last card, I think. You sure you want that one? Oh, wild card. What does it mean? It means you can do whatever you want. Wild card. So this is up to me, choose the panina that I want to do. It's up to me, because I'm going first. <laughs> For my third and final sandwich, I'm gonna steal a recipe from your mom, Ava. Natalia, I'm so sorry. You need to make an American sandwich. I am making an American sandwich, but with an Italian twist. Feels pretty ironic to say this to an Italian, but are you ready to try your first meatball sub? See, si, Alper, I'm ready. It seems strange. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem strange. I've never had a meatball sub. <laughs> <laughs> it's an American, an American Italian dish. It looks good. I've never made this is the this is the only sandwich today I've never made before. Sort of winging it. I picked up the meatballs because I learned from your mom. 
the sauce was your recipe, and then I just put it on a, a roll with, with some cheese. Uh, I expect to hear a lot from people who are gonna tell me I did this all wrong, but they are meatballs on a sub, so. It's a meatball sub. It's one of the messier sandwiches. It's not like super convenient as a form factor. I see. That's not where its strength lies. But it's like, I can do this. It's, I need to understand uh, from which side I need to bite because I want the meatball more than bread. <laughs> That bite looked like all bread. <laughs> I know. No more for I know. <laughs> keep going. Keep digging. No, you'll, wait, you'll, no. you'll find a meatball eventually. <laughs> There's a meatball in there somewhere. I promise. <laughs> How does my 99 cent grocery store hoagie taste? Because mm. <laughs> that's all you bit. <laughs> Harper is the most difficult sandwich to eat. <laughs> the bread is not very good, but the meatballs, Harper, <laughs> amazing. Not all of us know how to make our own bread. It's not so difficult. <laughs> so I just got like a hoagie at the grocery store and yeah, it's not very good. But assuming the bread were good, why, why is today just me being like, theoretically, theoretically, under totally different circumstances, couldn't you imagine yourself liking this? These meatballs are amazing. They are perfect. They are the perfect meatball. And the idea to put meatball in a maybe good bread, it's simple and it's a good idea. It's a good sandwich. Your meatball inspired me. Really? So, see, so I have several ideas in my mind, but you need to leave the room because it's a secret sandwich. I have to go? See, see, you have to disappear. I won't be able to film you. I don't care. You will <laughs> film me when everything will be done. Go, go. Are you serious? See? Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Everything okay in there? See, everything is okay, don't worry. You ready? See, Harper, I'm ready. So, let's go and try it. That's your sandwich? That's my sandwich. Okay. Oh, let's go, trust me, Harper, trust me. Ah, my favorite. A classic bread sandwich. It's made with bread, bread, and bread. A specialty of uh, the Campania region. Actually, Harper, yes. It's a specialty of Campania region. <laughs> really? Yes, you are right. But Harper, but there is a surprise. Of course. <laughs> no. I see some meatballs in there. Why are you taking them out? Don't worry, Harper, trust me. No. No. Now what? There's pasta in there? Pasta what in is there? this? Maybe <laughs> because we need to take all the pasta out because this is our first course. So Harper, this is the sandwich that the poor people did in the Campania region, also in the south of Italy, when they went to work, they couldn't carry the pasta, the meat, the veggies, the vegetables. So what they did, they took out the inside part of the bread, put everything in, tap it, and carry. So when it was time, lunch, uh, lunch time, they opened, and they had the first course, second course, and the bread. And this is delicious because all the tomato sauce it's I'm here, sure. so this is yeah. the best part. It's a sandwich. That might be a stretch. It's more like an edible lunchbox. Do you guys remember the Domino's pasta bread bowls? Little did I know those were the most authentically Italian thing on the menu. Number one. First course, buon appetito. Number two. Web a meatball. Last, but not least. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. It's the best to-go meal ever. 
definitely some bonus points here for creativity, surprise, and historical interest. That being said, I think I won because mine was more of a, more of a sandwich. So for the third one, let's make them decide who won. Okay. You guys let us know in the comments below who won, the guy who made a sandwich or the Italian who oh so typically served a plate of pasta and said, I won the sandwich contest. <laughs> let us know down below who you think won the last challenge here. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar. We'll drop some recipes in the description down below and we will see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.